Hi, welcome to this video about the QEG by Rights in the Storm. QEG is a quad looping envelope generator with 16 trigger outputs, separate outputs for every envelope generator as well as inverse outputs and two mix outputs, a positive one and a negative one. There's a multitude of buttons that you can press to select the mode of operation for every envelope generator or to select between certain behaviors. There's jumpers on the back that you can use to change the internal normalization. And there's of course 16 knobs on here, four for every envelope generator. These are ADSR envelopes, but you can also switch these to being ADR envelopes. QEG takes a little bit getting used to because you need to figure out what all these buttons do. But once you get it, it's a really versatile envelope generator. The build quality of this module is really nice. It's a really thick aluminum panel. The knobs feel nice too. There's a slight wobble to them. The buttons feel nice too. I want to thank people at Rides in the Storm for sponsoring this video by the way. Something to keep in mind when you add this module in modular grid, at least at the moment this is labeled as being 20 HP wide, while in fact this is 22 HP, so just be aware of this when you drag this into your virtual rack. First, let's listen to some patches I made with the QEG. And then I'll show you what every knob, button and output of this module does.
Let's have a look at one channel of the QEG to see and hear how the slopes of the envelope generator behave when we trigger them or gate them. The button trace on data is a gate coming from Pamela's new workout. I've just melted it and it's also going into the gate input for the first channel of the QEG. I've patched the output of the first channel into data and this is the top trace. So as you would expect with any regular ADSR envelope, as long as the gate is high, the level we set with the sustain knob is held. After that, the level or amplitude drops to zero at the rate or speed we set with the release knob. And when we turn the release knob to the right, we increase the time it takes for the level to drop to zero. Please note that we are on the fast setting at the moment. The decay parameter sets the time it takes for the envelope to drop to the level we set with the sustain knob and with the attack knob completely at its minimum position, the start level of this envelope will be 7.5 volts. And you can see when you turn the decay down, you get a short peak, then the level drops down to the level we set with the sustain knob, And the moment the gate stops, the level drops further down to zero at the speed or rate we set with the release knob. So you can get this drop to be instantaneous when you set the release to zero. Then of course there's still the attack knob you can see that the attack curve is slightly different from the other ones and the attack knob sets the time it takes from the start of the gate for the level of the envelope to reach the full level of 7.5 volts you can also see when the attack time, so the time the envelope needs to reach its full level, 
exceeds the time of the gate, the envelope stops rising at the end of the gate and skips to the release stage. The same thing goes for the decay parameter. If the decay time, so the time it takes the envelope to go from its full level to the level we set with the sustain up when this time exceeds the time of the gate it just skips straight to the release stage at the end of the gate and while personally i don't feel adsr envelopes are really that intuitive you can get really interesting results from them that you really can get with a regular AD or AR envelope. Every envelope in the QEG has a fast setting and a slow setting. In the slow setting the times are increased drastically. For every envelope there is also a manual trigger button. Let me remove the gate for a moment. And I say manual trigger but it's really a manual gate. probably also noticed that whenever QEG receives a gate or trigger the LEDs on top here light up. This is to indicate that there's a gate coming in. The gates for the envelopes are all normalized to the first one. There's a jumper on the back to change the normalization from the gate to a reset. And let me quickly patch the gate into the second envelope to show you that the normalization of the second, third and fourth channel is only to the first channel. It's not in a cascaded way. It only works when you get the first one. Then let's have a quick look at the loop mode. So you can loop the envelope. So this loops the complete four stages. But of course keep in mind that the sustain is just a level setting. When you press the one-shot button, the envelope stops looping. 
And this is useful for when you're just using a trigger instead of a gate and you still want to use the decay and the release part of the envelope. So I shortened the gate I'm sending in, so it's really more of a trigger. Now when I turn this loop and one-shot mode off, you should be able to see the difference. So this is just the regular ADSR envelope. So as long as the gate is high, it goes through its attack and decay phase, but because the gate is very short, it reaches the end of that cycle really fast and then it moves on to the release stage. And sometimes triggers is all you've got and you want a longer envelope. And to make that work, you need to press the loop and the one shot button. And then you get an ADR envelope. Turn off the one shot. So, right now our envelope is looping, the one shot button is not pressed. Let's see what happens when we add a trigger to this. And you can see that whenever a trigger or gate is received, the envelope restarts at the beginning. So the level of the envelope starts back at zero. It doesn't matter where it was, it always goes back to zero and restarts its attack phase. But there's a legato setting that you can activate by pressing this button here. And when you have pressed this and you're in looping mode, whenever the QEG receives a trigger, it just moves on from the volume or amplitude it was and it doesn't return to zero volts. Let's increase the length of my gate again. You can see how it increases at the bottom trace here on data. And let's add some drums to this because this is getting really boring. There's one additional input on the top here of every envelope generator in QEG. And this additional input lets us control the length setting of the envelopes with external CV. I'm just going to use an offset generator to illustrate this. So I've patched the output of TUL into data is the red trace. You can see how it's generating an offset. Now when I patch this to the input, you can hear that nothing is happening. For this input to become active, you really need to press this switch. So you need to switch the envelope into the slow setting. And then when you send in an offset, 
it changes over to the fast setting. And it really only needs a one volt of offset to switch over. So to reiterate, for this input to work, you need to select the slow setting and then you can control this externally. You could of course use one of the other envelopes to control this if you set them to looping and make them slow. Now the trouble with this normalized routing is that whenever you want to use one of these envelopes separately you really need to plug in a dummy cable so it doesn't reset whenever the first envelope receives a gate or a trigger. And you can also see and hear that the change between the fast and the slow setting it's a little bit weird it happens instantaneous there's no slew so let's remove this modulation And like I told before, the maximum level of the regular output of the envelopes is between 0 and 7.5 volts. And the level of the inverse outputs is between 7.5 volts and 0. So that's exactly the same range, but it's the inverted version. Now you can see that the red trace on data is the exact inverse of the green trace. But the inverse envelopes don't go below zero, they all stay above zero. So where the envelope that I'm using to open the filter is at its maximum the red envelope is at its minimum of zero volts and vice versa the minimum of the green envelope being zero volts translates to the maximum of the red envelope being seven and a half volts so this is very interesting to use as envelopes for sidechain compression effects. There's no need to add additional offsets to your envelopes. You can just patch these into the CV inputs of a VCA and trigger these with the same trigger that you're using for the kick drum. And you have a really versatile sidechain compression kind of effect. Now, the power of this module, while of course these four envelopes are really interesting and really versatile, the real power lies in all the outputs here. And let me just quickly run through what all these abbreviations mean. So there's four outputs for every envelope or channel. There's BG, which stands for the beginning of 
the gate so this is just the start of the gate or trigger that you sent in let me quickly patch this into the scope it might be a little bit too short of a trigger to visualize so let's do this a little bit different let's trigger a cowbell with uh, this trigger uh, why a cowbell just because let's turn down the filter a little bit maybe that's a little bit too much so now you can hear that the cowbell is triggered at the start of every gate so even when I turn up the attack of the envelope the cowbell just triggers at the start of the gate then there's EA which stands for end of attack So when the attack knob is at a zero, this will correspond to the trigger of the first one, more or less. But when we turn the attack up, you can hear that we are delaying this trigger by the time set by the attack knob here. And this is really useful when you want to use QEG just to trigger drums or events around your patch because there's 16 of these triggers plus four regular envelopes and four inverted ones. And then there's the plus and the minus mix that we still need to talk about. There's all these different outputs that you can use to trigger events all around your patch and this is really interesting because you can really precisely set them to be a little bit off grid or exactly on grid just like you want it okay so then there is es which stands for end of sustain So in most cases, this would just be the end of the gate. Of course, when you switch this to one shot, This would be a little bit different because the end of the sustain is then more set by the timing of the decay. It's a little bit confusing, but yeah. And then there's end of release, which of course is just the end of the complete cycle. can hear when the gate happens before the cycle has ended this trigger won't fire now you can change this output to trigger at the begin of the attack which of course just corresponds to the beginning of the gate I'm not completely sure why this was implemented, but it probably has something to do with the fact that if the next gate or trigger happens before the cycle has ended, this gate won't fire, so you can change this out. So this gate will always fire at whatever setting of the release now. You'll see with this 
long release and I now change this to the end of release the cowbell won't be triggered so now let's use the positive mix output to change the frequency of my filter so now all these envelopes are triggering at the same time and mixed together there's some kind of averager inside this circuit it's not like the envelope has an amplitude of 30 volts this becomes interesting when you start triggering this envelope in kind of a looping pattern let me show you what I mean so let's use the end of release trigger from the first envelope the one we are triggering with the gate we are seeing on data so let's use the end of release from this envelope to trigger the next one and let's shorten the release and you can see that the other two are still being triggered at the same time as the first one so let's go for the end of release output on the second envelope to trigger the third one and because at this point we're dealing with triggers it's best to engage the loop and one shot mode for all of these So I've changed the envelopes to the fast setting. Some of them were still on the slow setting. Sometimes it's hard to see with these buttons at which setting you are because there's not much of a difference visually between them being pressed down and not. But okay, let's connect the end of release output of the third envelope to the trigger input of the fourth one cables out of the way so you can see these LEDs a little bit better so at this point it's best to look at the LEDs at the bottom here and let's remove the gate completely and now you can see when I gate this manually that the other envelopes follow and the timing depends on the relative settings you'll see when I shorten this it goes faster even more To make this even more fun, let's connect the end of release trigger of the fourth envelope to the trigger input of the first one. And now nothing is happening, but from the moment that I manually gate the first envelope, or it doesn't really matter which one, you'll see that everything starts looping.
and you can even add a second loop inside the first one or not inside but just alongside the first one and I think this is a really unique and cool feature of this QEG by Rides in the Storm let me try adding another one can of course still use all of the other outputs and triggers let's use the first output to modulate my resonance them they really just they do start adding up I don't know how the internal circuitry is wired and of course all of this is also possible with the negative or inverted envelopes when you just use the mix negative output it's just the same as the inverse envelopes here but the mix This will be it for this overview of the Quad Envelope Generator by Rights in the Storm. I hope you found this video helpful. If there's any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer them as soon as I see them. I hope you learned something. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.